Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel, The Ninth Cup, where all of my readings focus on your soul's destiny and everything you can do to embody your soul's purpose. This is going to be a general reading for the new moon solar eclipse in the sign of Aries coming up on April 19th. This is going to be um, pretty much a preview to the um, next nodal placements in the signs of Aries and Libra. So this solar eclipse is a pretty impactful one. Um, it is in, um, you know, a margin sign and it's the first sign of the zodiac so it's really going to be um you know really triggering a lot of um initiations new starts um you know you know spirits really putting the fire under our backsides to get things going um while simultaneously bringing things to a completion um now new moon solar eclipses new moons in general are always about um, setting your intentions and starting new things but because this is an eclipse you know eclipses are um, actually about um taking away things right like ending things eclipsing things out of um, our human experience so um yeah i think this is actually going to be pretty interesting because it is during uh, mercury retrograde or at least in the shadow period of mercury retrograde um, and we do have um, other strong transits going on um, pluto and aquarius uh, saturn's in pisces and um, the ruler of aries is currently in cancer so he's in his fall there he's not really strong but um you know with this solar eclipse i think it's just going to be um strong regardless of where mars is placed because of the nature of the eclipse um and again the other transits that are going on so there's my little blurb for that uh, for those of you who are current subscribers thank you so much for joining me and sharing your energy with me for those of you who are just stopping by my name is karen michelle yearwood i am an intuitive guidance counselor and i help people like yourself along the ascension journey so let's get some star codes for this new moon um solar eclipse in aries um it's the star codes astro oracle deck and so i'm just gonna pull three of them let's see okay. let's see what we have we have second house so some of you could have aries in the second house this is about our resources it's the natural house of taurus um, but it's you know how we make our money right our self-worth our possessions our assets and literally the things that we do to bring about um, physical and tangible stability in our lives pluto here's a uh, rebirth so that pluto transit he's in uh, the early degrees of aquarius at zero degrees um, so i think this eclipse maybe can bring in some rebirth maybe rebirth around career money finances you know clearing out old blockages around welcoming new um strings of income oh here's taurus cultivate and it's a number two and that's the second house wow so the second house is kind of loud some of you could maybe have aquarius in your second house um maybe your natal pluto is in second house in the second house all right so there's you know our resources rebirth you know evolution things coming to a completion and then there's the taurian energy which is venusian ruled and venus is obviously um, the ruler of the opposite sign of uh, where Aries is, that's Libra, right? So it's the other end of the eclipse or where that south node is going to be transiting coming up this summer. Bottom of the deck is Aquarius. Collaborate. All right, so number 11. And the 11 is linked over to the justice energy and the ma major arcanas in the standard tarot decks. All right, so we have um, themes of Venus here, Pluto and Aquarius, which is, you know, just happens to be where Pluto is transiting right now. So I think that this, you know, new moon is really going to be, um, like I mentioned, bringing in um, some avenues or, you know, opening up new roads for um, earning higher levels of income or new ways of earning income, um, different ways even, because, you know, with this Pluto and Aquarius energy, it could be things that are um, a little bit left of center. Another thing is Uranus is currently transiting Taurus. He'll be there until 2026. So for, you know, a few more years, we're going to have this Uranian energy and a Venusian ruled sign. So what does that say? You know, uh, differences with even how we value our money. Um, collectively, we're seeing that, you know, the shifts with, you know, currency, you know, the things changing with our banking system, um, crypto and the, and the dollar bill, the power of the dollar bill. Um, all of these things are changing on a collective level and you may see this as well in your individual lives, obviously. Um, but, you know, going back to like the day to day, you know, things that you're doing that are, um, 
creating security and stability in your lives, I think you could see some of this shake up, you know, you know, not just with this new moon solar eclipse on the 19th, but over the next uh, three to six months, because eclipses do um, happen, you know, the changes happen in our 3D human experience over a period of time. We usually just get like a flash, right? It's usually like a bolt of lightning that kind of highlights what could be transpiring um, in the coming months, all right? But I do think this is really focused around like your, your values, right? How you make money, how you create security, you know, who you collaborate with, who you trust, who you partner with. Um, you know, I was watching, I think, I forgot who said it, um, but it was somebody on Bill Maher. Um, he comes on on HBO every Friday night. And one of his guests said that money basically is trust. And that kind of hit home for me. I never really thought of it that way, you know, at least not consciously, but this, you know, with this Pluto rebirth here in the, in the center, there could be um, some highlights around, you know, just who you trust, you know, not just with your money, but who you trust to help, um, to help you bring about security, right? Who do you help trust? Uh, not who do you help trust, who do you trust to help you create um, stability? Who do you um, trust to, I guess, I don't want to say validate your, your ideas, but you know what I mean? Like, who do you trust to help you nurture what it is that you're bringing into reality, right? So with Venusian themes, that is about birth, that is about fertility, not just physically, but uh, figuratively speaking as well. So these, you know, new projects, contracts, products, um, services, things like that, that maybe you're working on, like who are the right people that you need to be aligned with to really keep it um, viable and, you know, prosperous. So again, these are some things that could be transpiring over um, the next few months. So I like this. All right, let's do um, a three card spread on stop, start, continue. So what do we need to stop? What needs to come to a close over the next few months? What's in the stop position? I'm using the Modern Witch Tarot deck. Let's see, stop, we have King of Cups. Now the King of Cups, it's water energy, Pis uh, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. We do have Mars and Cancer, like I mentioned in the beginning of the reading, but this is coming out in the stop position. The thing with the King of Cups is that um, he often feels, and I say he, although it doesn't always have to be a man, but it is masculine energy, is that there's a depth, you know, there's an emotional depth with the King of Cups, but he doesn't always express it. So this could be, um, you know, spirits telling you or suggesting, offering you, an opportunity to share your um, your emotions, to share your feelings with others, um, to feel safe in terms of maybe just how credible you come across. You know, there are some people that were raised or you know told at young ages that if you share your emotions, you are, oh, my daughter's starting to cry. <laughs> I'll go grab her in a second. But if you share your emotions, you are not stable. You know, you can't be trusted. Um, I think Spirit is saying like, there's a way to do that and still be, um, you know, secure or still be still still be seen as somebody who is trustworthy still be seen as somebody who is a subject matter expert um, bottom of the deck right now is a uh, six of cups so nostalgia childhood um energy somebody that you've known for a long time maybe this is um also linked to um masking emotions around childhood topics. Hold on guys. Sorry about that. All right. Six of cups here at the bottom of the deck and the king of cups here in the position of stop. So this could also be, and this is what I heard, but it just, you know, what I heard from Stuart wasn't really making sense with what I was saying before. I heard, stop trusting people from your past. Um, they may not longer be aligned with where you're going, right? With this Aquarius card at the bottom of the um, Oracle's deck, the people that we've known for a really long, long, a really long time may not be the best people that we need to collaborate with. The, ne the best people that we need to bring in sources of income and abundance, right? The people we do business with. That may seem like a no-brainer to most of you, but sometimes it isn't. You know, um, 
we oftentimes feel obligated or indebted to people that we have known for a long time, maybe since childhood, maybe not your childhood, but you've known for a lifetime, you know, really just depends on how many uh, human years you've been here on the planet Earth. But this is all on um, the energies in the stop position. Okay, so apply it how it resonates. And of course, do not force it. Let's get something from the um, the start position. So what do we need to start over the next few months? What do we need to start? A oh, four of swords, maybe taking more time out, resting. Okay, I'm gonna get a clarifier for that one actually. Oh, the star, beautiful, card of Aquarius. All right. So start remaining hopeful for your future. Start remaining um, or start becoming, you know, more uh, optimistic about what is in store for you. Some of you could be a little cynical. Some of you maybe don't see, um, you know, your vision in terms of actually like becoming a reality. And I think it, it could. I think it, it can because we do have some tangible energies here you know, overall, you know, with the, the second house, that's the house of Taurus, the Taurus card is here. Aquarius is, is air energy, but Aquarius, you know, takes things that have been tried and true and transforms it, right? Kind of flips it on its head and does something different, you know, and kind of, you know, uh, building on this four of swords energy, the star on top of the four of swords, it's kind of like saying, taking it, take a time out and just kind of take stock in like what it is that you have, um, dreamt up that you've uh like verbalized that you strategize that has been very successful you know and it's not the traditional meaning of the four of swords i know but i am channeling intuitively and according to this um new moon solar eclipse you know and and, and set your intentions around you know being shown like new insight you know don't just kind of be okay with flatlining or you know plateauing with where you are in a particular endeavor. I think what's on the other side of this, like, you know, uh, new resources and cultivating new ideas is just getting that spark, right? Get, you know, tapping into this Uranus energy. And, you know, we are going to have, um, I think it's actually, I think it's a few days after the solar eclipse, we're going to have, um, sun and Taurus actually squaring off with Pluto and Aquarius. I think it's going to be um, a perfect square around the 20th or 21st of this month in April. So that could also be a really great time to, you know, act spirit to help bring into your awareness um, where you can go with any particular endeavors. It's going to be different for all of you, right? So I'm doing a general message. So just apply it to how it resonates for you at this time. Bottom of the deck right now is a chariot. All right, this is the card of Cancer. But this is movement, right? It's also balancing divine feminine, divine masculine, balancing opposites, um, polarizing uh, or polar opposites. Um, and it is like kind of having an agenda, like know, knowing where you're going. The chariot for me is always about um, having like an exact destination because it is said that in the chariot, um, the person steering that chariot is the emperor, right? The Aries card. And the emperor is a strategist. The emperor has a game plan. The emperor knows where he's going. And there will be some people that are following him. If not, then he's on his own, right? That's the emperor energy. So embody that, you know, with this new moon solar eclipse. So where do we have in the continue position? What do we have in the continue position? Oh, the justice energy. Here's the card of Libra. Okay. So continue being fair, being balanced, um, being honest and truthful, um, clear with your intentions, you know, uh, continue wanting to have things um, legitimate, legitimatize, <laughs> excuse me, I don't know if I can say that, things made legit, I'll say that, uh, maybe forming contracts, getting things secure, right, and so this could be going hand in hand with that Aquarius energy with collaborating, you know, not to say it's never okay to just um, informally talk ideas with people that you trust, of course, but I think spirit is saying like, you know, continue to take yourself seriously and see things through from start to finish. That can actually be a little bit of a um, shadow side of Aries energy is starting things very quickly, but fizzling out or losing energy over a period of time and not wrapping things up. So with this justice energy, it's just, you know, again, I think spirit saying like continue to 
balance the starts with the finishes. Um, you know, remain open to possibilities, remain open to, you know, a sense of like prosperity because there is that Venusian energy incorporated with this justice card. Let's get one more. The death card. Here's Pluto. All right, so the, the energies here, the themes are kind of repeating a little bit. All right, because we do have Pluto in the middle card in that um, in the Astrology Oracle deck with Rebirth. We have Taurus here, you know, um, twice with the second house. Taurus rules the second house. The Taurus card is here. We have the star energy and the star, I mean, the Aquarius Oracle at the bottom of the deck, right? So again, the themes are kind of overlapping here. And here's the death card in the tarot. So deep transformation, and this is in the continued position. So keep changing, right? Don't be afraid to change. Um, and that doesn't mean that you're being completely different. I think sometimes we can remain the same in terms of um, our, our constitution, our, our values, right? Our personal beliefs and values. But we change in terms of like um, who we speak to, maybe who we inspire, how we present ourselves. That can change. Maybe some of you have Taurus on the Ascendant. Maybe some of you have Aquarius on the Ascendant. So Pluto is going to be moving through your first house over the next 20 years. So with that, obviously, there's going to be tons of changes in terms of how you move about um, pretty much all areas of your life, you know, because if you do have uh, if you do have Aquarius on your Ascendant, then that's going to ping pretty much your entire chart. It's going to hit the, the, the fourth, the seventh and the tenth houses, all of your angular houses, which basically lights up the whole chart. Um, so there is that or or Aries, you could, some of you could be Aries rising as well. That means this next series of eclipses are going to light up your entire chart. So again, with that, there are a series of deaths, endings and rebirths. Um, and something to really develop from from a new so I love how we have these two um, energies here these um, really complementary energies right with the Venusian energy of bringing something in but then we also have this completion energy as well the star card can kind of be completions as well it's not necessarily um, meant to, to be like a, a death energy or completion like the world or you know death or ten of swords but i do think the star because it does come right after the tarot i mean the tarot the tower card in the tarot deck that it's like after something has crumbled after something is completed we have this energy of again picking up being hopeful for a new day um gaining insights from like-minded individuals right so embedded into that is kind of like honoring the ending right or, or you know taking that ending and using that as kind of a catapult to go into the future because Aquarius is literally the sign of the future so again just some different insights here not necessarily the standard meaning of these tarot cards bottom of the deck is the queen of swords right so this is air energy doing your due diligence right asking good questions asking open-ended questions um, remaining open to dialogue conversation not just you know yeses and nos and always being clear on what it is that is expected of you and what you expect of others you know having this kind of um, open door policy I don't know why I just heard that open door policy so maybe this is like welcoming in new clients are you going to pursue new clients if that's applicable or you know going back to what I said about friendships from your past from your childhood you know maybe this is about setting up boundaries with those those people right that you know what you want to do moving forward um, just doesn't align with you know maybe how you've been connected with them in the past and doing so gently it doesn't have to be anything super harsh um, this is actually a great time to do so with mercury retrograde a lot of people are afraid of mercury retrograde but I think um, with Mercury retrograding, especially in the sign of Taurus, of a Venusian rule sign, it could be a great time to soften some of the dialogue around themes that have come up time and time again. All right. So it really just depends on um, what's in your natal chart, what's going on with you. And also that Mercury um, in uh, Taurus is going to be opposing the current south node in Scorpio. And so we have Scorpio energy here with the um, death card. All right. So let's wrap up the reading with a few oracles. Let me get, um, let's do the angel answers and then, um, and that'll be it. So, um, information's down below for, um, readings and if this is your kind of thing, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, even if there's something small that resonates.
So angel answers, communicate clearly. And look at that. We just ended with the queen of swords and here we have communicate clearly. All right. So spirits pretty much supporting what I've been channeling. Two more compromise. This is like the justice card and you see the, the scales there in the image. All right. So you may have to compromise on certain things. You may have to, um, maybe do things you don't, don't necessarily like, but it's going to be beneficial for you in the long run. All right, one more. <laughs> Helpful people. This is to really support the um, collaborative energy that was at the bottom of the deck in the uh, in the astrology oracles. All right, you guys, I'm going to leave it here. Again, if something here resonates, please like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Thank you so much for being here. I hope to see you in the next reading and be sure to thrive. Bye.